Welcome once again to the Dangerously Disorganized Reloading Table of Doom! This video will describe the use of a common balance beam powder scale. This is the type often sold under the Hornady name and was found used at a gun show for $15. It retails new for something over 60 I think, last time I checked. Comparable models from RCBS, for example, should be functionally identical. The Lee model is somewhat different but does the same thing in mostly the same way. First let's identify the features. This model has a leveling screw on the far end there to compensate if your working surface is not perfectly level. Most of the bar will be marked in 10 grain increments, usually with a sliding weight. The Lee scale uses a ball in a track. The balance point will usually be a razor edge. The rest of the bar will be marked in one grain and one tenth grain increments. The Lee scale uses two smaller bars, one nested inside the other. You can download the manual for the Lee scale from the Lee website, leeprecision.com. This model has additional zeroing nuts on the far end. At the far end will be the hanging point for the powder pan. The scale is calibrated to use the pan it came with. The zeroing nuts and leveling screw might compensate for some other pan that you might find at some guy's table in a gun show if the weight is not too different. Factory bullets make good check weights. Let's try a couple. The scale must be on a level surface or one which can be made level. The zeroing screw here allows fine adjustment which you can see with the pointer here on the scale. These scales are not necessarily calibrated but they're used as a visual reference. These numbers do not necessarily mean any particular fraction of a grain. After you've used the scale for a while, you'll get to know how much the marks on your scale will actually weigh. With all scale weights set at zero and the pan in place and empty, your pointer should be hovering at zero. Adjust your level until it does. You'll also get a feel for how far it's going to swing relative to these marks in order to stabilize. Placing a weight in the pan will cause the bar to drop. Well, the pan to drop and the bar to raise. This is a 150 grain 30 caliber rifle bullet. Starting with the largest increments, move the weight until the scale overbalances. Then go back one, until it raises again. That's what the smaller increments on the, on the other end are for. And here we see it's very close to 150 grains. So if I actually went back another increment to 140 grains, then took the one grain increment and ran it up to nine, you see it's still overweight. Then I took the tenth grain increment and run that up to, let's say, seven. And run that up to nine, all the way. So presuming this scale is correctly leveled and zeroed, actually it's still a little light. I will put these two back at zero, and this at 150. Pretty close.
Next, let's try a 230 grain 45 pistol bullet. Actually, these are 200 grain. It's a very old spear. Again, you start with the largest increment first. And again, it's just uh, within a, a tenth or two of a grain. Let's try something that's not right on one of the big increments. This is a 147 grain 9 millimeter bullet. Going from a heavier weight to a lighter works the same way. You start with the heaviest increment first. Correction, that's 115 grain. Then you move to the next smaller increment. And you finish with the smallest. So presuming I leveled and zeroed the scale correctly, this 115 grain bullet is 100, 110-115.2 grains. 0.2 grains in a bullet weight is usually insignificant. Now let's see how to measure powder, which is the purpose of a powder measure. You start by zeroing the scale. There are usually three increments, 10 grains, whole grains, and one-tenth of a grain. And in case you didn't know, there are 7,000 grains in a common 16-ounce pound. Let's not get into troy weights or metric. This particular scale does have a chart here which says 7,000 grains to one pound and then it gives several grain measurements in ounces. That's for calibrating uh, shot charge weights for shot shells. I usually use a powder measure of some kind. But the measure must be checked and its throw weight confirmed for each reloading session. Day-to-day -day variations in temperature and humidity can affect the weight of a powder charge being thrown. Also different lot numbers in a different can of powder may come out of the factory slightly different. So what was a marginal load last time you tried it might be over maximum this time. Never leave powder exposed. Never leave a powder container open longer than is necessary. When done with your session, always return the powder to its original container and make sure it's closed. I've developed a 45 ACP hand loaded using 5.3 grains of Winchester 231. I use the Lee Auto Disc powder measure to dispense these charges. But I always check the throw weight at the beginning of each loading session. I suppose now I'll have to do a tutorial video on how to use the Lee Auto Disc, but not today. After throwing the powder charge, it is poured into the pan. Make sure it's all in there. If you zero the scale, even with a small charge, the scale should overbalance. Now, I happen to know this is supposed to be 5.3 grains, so I go to 5. I don't move this one at all because the first increment is 10. Move this to 3. Looks like it's a little heavy today. 5.5. Then I usually do two more just to be sure. One advantage to the auto disc powder measure is the adjustment does not drift. It is a fixed cavity in a plastic disc. So the adjustment, for example, on the RCBS Uniflow, it won't work loose. There is no adjustment. So I throw another charge and I check that. And you see how far it swings 
past the zero mark. After using your scale for a while, you'll, you'll learn how far it swings so that you will know it will come back to zero. Actually, I think that's about 5.4. Also, viewing the scale at an angle can, th can give you a visual parallax, and it might not be zero. Get your head down there and look at it. 5.5. So the first was 5.5, the second is 5.5, and the third is going to be 5.52 because I recognize how far it swings. And then, I, it turns out, I'm using the aperture on the auto disc. It uses these discs. These are those cavities I was just talking about. The auto disc cannot go out of adjustment because you have to take it apart to adjust it. And this also is 5.5 grains, and it turns out that the last time I loaded 45, I wasn't using 5.3 grains, I was using 5.6 grains. I was using a different cavity. Different disc, too. Probably this one. So, that was evidently a load I was using, because there's nothing else I was going to use it for and it's, it's in spec for the load that I've developed. Now, once you're, once you're sure your powder measure is dispensing the charge you want consistently, then go ahead and load a bunch of rounds. And that's how a balance beam scale works. If you're paranoid, and there's no reason not to be, then check it every 10 or 20 or 50 rounds.